The SBA is making improvements to PPP borrowers, both first draw and second draw folks. Brief news on the $15 minimum wage bill. On the new COVID relief bill and the timing there could be next week. And thoughts on who would get a third stimulus check. Biden is willing to negotiate on the income levels. And finally, EIDL grant news. Hey everyone, this is Ryder from Skip. I hope you're doing well. It's Wednesday, January 27th. Very quick video update today. PPP, EIDL, and stimulus news. First, our new version of the app is out for many of you. A few quick highlights that I've already talked about here. Basically, you can see the total amount of funding that has been claimed by Skip users. That's everyone who's using our app who, according to SBA rules, would be eligible for more EIDL grant funding up to $10,000. This is an example in this scenario where you can see that at the bottom it says your address qualifies and at the top it says how much you are eligible for. In this case, $9,000 in EIDL grant. You can quickly see how much you are eligible for when you go to trackeidlgrant.com and get our app. This is the latest version that is just out and you can keep an eye on how much is claimed. If you don't qualify for more funding yet, remain optimistic because I'm optimistic there's a lot of funding here. 40 billion is a lot. And I think once the new administrator gets signed in, she may reevaluate who gets targeted the IDL grants and who is eligible and basically widen who is eligible. You know, this is the proposal we put together yesterday. Many of you saw this and commented and liked our effort. We suggested that the targeted EIDL grant provision be expanded so it doesn't only include people in low-income communities, but also people who are low-income that don't happen to be in low-income communities. So that's our proposal. We shared some of the data here on the app and on our blog. Again, you can go to trackeidlgrant.com. Stimulus check news, 10% of you have received it. PPP, tens of thousands of you have applied. You can track it all here. By the way, if you got a letter from whoever you applied with that you weren't approved, we have multiple options. So I'm gonna leave links in the description. You can go to trackppploan.com to get the Bluevine application, but let's say you, you tried with Bluevine and you already heard back that you weren't approved. You can also try with Funding Circle and with Credibly. So those links are right in the description. Vaccine progress, there's good news there. First, I'm gonna show you this. Almost 20 million people have been vaccinated, around 6% of the US population and this is the big news. The Biden administration nears a deal for enough shots to vaccinate 300 million Americans by the end of summer. That's terrific news. A lot of these vaccines will be produced in the coming months, so we're not going to get all these doses right away. But it basically means over the next months, the speed of distribution can pick up. Of course, a lot depends on the effectiveness of the distribution. That's being criticized a lot. But as long as the federal government has the available doses, of course, each state can improve their processes Hopefully we can get the majority of Americans vaccinated and get our economies, small businesses, livelihoods up and running full steam ahead. Here's what Biden said. Until now, we've had to guess how much vaccine to expect for the next week. And that's what the governors had to do. How much am I getting next week? This is unacceptable. Lives are at stake here. This will allow governors to plan more in advance and have a predictable way for them to know, okay, I'm getting X doses next week so I can plan who's gonna show up to get shots and get vaccinated. Now, before I talk about the last SBA news on PPP and EIDL, this is the corresponding good news that cases are going down, continuing to go down 33% over the last 14 days. Deaths are flat. They were down, now they're flat. That's not good. But we are keeping an eye on this. The trends are good. Here we go. Vote as soon as next week. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Tuesday that lawmakers could vote as soon as next week on Biden's relief bill, possibly setting the stage for passage via reconciliation. Schumer's quote, the work must move forward, preferably with our Republican colleagues, but without them, if we must, time is of the essence to address this crisis. Now, one of the complaints, especially from Republicans, is eligibility for $1,400 relief checks. And as we know right now, under 75,000, you get the full amount, over 75,000, you get it tiered. So in this last one, you kind of phase out just under 90,000. So if you made under 90,000, based on your 2019 returns, you wouldn't get anything. Biden is willing to compromise because there's pushback here to make it so there's a strict cutoff. None of this phasing out, but there's a strict cutoff at 75,000. The reason being is this, for higher income households, the recession is largely over, according to the Washington Post, Heather Long, but for low income households, the recession is more like a depression with unemployment rates hovering near 20%. So if this change were to happen, or there'd be a harder cutoff in terms of who gets $1,400 stimulus checks, that would mean that the overall package would be less and it would appeal more to Republicans who want to save a bit of money here. So that's on the table. Biden says he's open to that. The other big news is that Democrats have reintroduced $15 minimum wage bill with unified control of Congress. Bernie Sanders talked about how the current minimum wage is basically useless. 
no one can survive on seven plus bucks an hour. So the legislation would gradually hike the pay floor from $15 an hour nationwide by 2025, then tie future increases to median wage growth. The measure would also end pay below the minimum wage for tipped workers, along with certain teens and people with disabilities. The party has long pushed to raise the federal minimum wage, which has stalled $7.25 an hour since 2009, okay? By the way, if you find this helpful, please subscribe. Thank you so much for supporting us and supporting our daily updates on important news, especially as it relates to small business funding and stimulus funding. Jenna Yellen, as we know, was confirmed yesterday. She said, economics isn't just something you find in the textbook. It can be a potent tool to right past wrongs and improve people's lives. That's why so many of Treasury's 84,000 public servants joined the department, and she's proud to be one of them. Now, in terms of the rest of the confirmations this week, Isabel Guzman, the proposed SBA administrator, is not on the schedule yet. Okay, that's too bad. I've said I think she's going to be great in terms of improving PPP and EIDL, but she's not on the schedule. We're hoping next week she'll get on the schedule. There have been lots of organizations that have urged the Senate to improve her quickly so she can take over PPP and EIDL loans and grants. One of these letters says the aid provided by these critical programs would benefit from having an SBA administrator confirmed and actively engaged as part of the president's cabinet. Now, the SBA is doing some improvements. They released this yesterday. The SBA has made improvements to improve the process for not only first draw applicants, but also second draw applicants. A couple things they're going to be doing this week, hosting a national call to brief lenders on the platform's additional detailed information, including the potential holds that impact second draw PPP loan applicants. I talked about this error they had. They have a bug in their system that's preventing second draw applicants who haven't had their first PPP forgiven yet. That affects around 75% of all PPP applicants, second draw applicants that is. And they are doing some other improvements as well to improve the review and resolution process. So hopefully these all mean that it will speed up the review process, whether you are a first time PPP borrower or a second time PPP borrower. Overall, it's good news. As I end, just want to show you another feature we updated on the app where you can see all of your badges and reminders and when they're expiring. It's on the dashboard screen and then you can quickly see your stimulus tracker, EIDL grant tracker, PPP, and vaccine tracker all in one place, and any other reminders that you want to set up. You know, we have these for lots of things related to health, home, auto, and travel. Anyway, it's all right here on the app. Huge shout out and thanks to our team for putting this up. Again, it's a free app. Go to trackeidlgrant.com and then you can see the EIDL grant progress as it is self-reported on Skip. As always, stay well, stay healthy. Thank you for subscribing. We'll see you tomorrow.